Hi, my name's David. The session is Leaving Drupal. Um, this, isn't, uh, this isn't a how-to, so if you were expecting a how-to, uh, that's not what this session's about. Um, so this is Leaving Drupal. I I'm, I'm going to give my caveats at the beginning, and there's a lot of disclaimers, um, as you would imagine, giving a session like this at DrupalCon. Uh, thanks to Kathy Thais for even accepting this, co this talk in the first place because, you know, it, it, it was a little submission bait, but it was also, I mean, meant in complete earnestness as well, so uh, as you might see. Um, the original title of this, so the impetus of this talk, uh, as I was formulating in my head, was called, Where'd All My Friends Go? Um, a, a little background about myself. My name is David Wong. Uh, I'm at Eatings on Twitter and on D.O. Uh, I, after talking to somebody after the keynote looked up my Drupal profile, and this is my 11th DrupalCon, which is kind of crazy because the time just kind of flies right by. I, I just very recently on the, you know, uh, where were you feature on Facebook, it surfaced a photo from the original DrupalCon, the, uh, DrupalCon DC, my first DrupalCon, which doesn't seem altogether that long ago. So um, I didn't realize I'd gotten so long in the tooth in the Drupal community so quickly. Uh, to continue my very many caveats, uh, I'm here to share some stories. Uh, these are not necessarily my stories. In fact, most of them are not my story because I'm here giving a talk at DrupalCon and not at home, you know, doing something else. And I understand that story is not the singular of data, and data is not the plural of story, and I'm not here to give a data-filled presentation full of demographic data or the sociographic study, longitudinal study that I've done. Um, this is really me reaching out to people, hey, have you left Drupal? Have you stopped using Drupal? Can you tell me your story? Um, I'll be happy to share it as long as you, you know, you, you want it anonymous and you know, off the record, done. So except for two stories here where I got explicit permission to as as ascribe names, um, these are all genericized stories but capture the essence of what people have said. And uh, in all honesty, I'm probably not qualified to give this talk um, other than I submitted it. Um, there's nothing special about my experience or the people I know. I don't feel like uh, I captured anything particularly special unto myself. You submitted it to make the 12 oh, Well, there we go. Okay. Um, and I'm just hoping to do justice with the stories that I shared today. Uh, and so they're going to be in uh, a couple major categories, and we'll go, by, go through them one by one, and then come to the unsatisfying ending where you guys tell me your side of things. Uh, because this is what I'm hoping to do is uh, provoke a little conversation. So we'll start with set one, circumstances. And since I've said I was going to share stories, haha, as a human, I want to continuously readjust my priorities so that I can live a life that fulfills me as my personal situation evolves. So, for example, my partnership is the primary focus of my life now. Very, very common, right? I have a family, and they need my attention. My physical health, my mental health. I can't afford to participate in community events for whatever reason. You know, uh, it may be temporary, it may be long term. I left my Drupal job for another job outside the Drupalverse. So by dint of that, I've left Drupal. Another category means to an end. As an employee of an organization, I am primarily responsible for advancing my employer's business priorities. Drupal helps us achieve our goals, but it's not the focus of my responsibility. I inherited this Drupal site, did my best work with it. In the end, we went with something else because it was better. Better with a star because better means different things to different people. It might be better because it was cheaper. It might be better because somebody had a bone to pick with Drupal. It might be better because you worked at, uh, at, 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 you know, at that uh, corporation in, in Panama and you, know, you didn't patch Drupal and now you leaked all those uh, LLC <laughs> secrets to the world. My organization had a Drupal site, but we hated it. We switched to fill-in-the-blank alternative and fill-in-the-blank constituency is much happier now. I'm sure everybody's sort of experienced something like this before. Drupal may be a technical choice, but it's not a good or sound business choice, and other people are happier by moving away from it. I can't afford to keep a Drupal site up when the alternatives are so much less expensive. There is a bottom to the market, and Drupal no longer sits near that bottom. So the entry point is much, much lower now, both in terms of expertise and in dollars, and also in upkeep. There's cheaper alternatives. People choose to go there for financial and or other reasons. This one's really tricky, and I, and I heard this a bit. 
my agency isn't taking on any more Drupal business because it's faster, cheaper, more fun, more profitable if we build things this other way instead. And this one is very, I think, politically sensitive here because, I mean, obviously, nobody went on record saying this with their names, but this is something I heard a bit. And this speaks of two different things, that there are underlying personal reasons for the engineers and the developers and the strategists and the designers to want to move away from Drupal. And then there are market forces that are probably pushing them in that way as well. And those, in total, effect a change outside the, the Drupal universe. And then this last one, I like Drupal, but we moved over to WordPress at work, so I'm not part of that Drupal world anymore. You know, work changes, you want to stick with Drupal, your boss says we're not on Drupal anymore, you're not on Drupal anymore. Next section, structure and support. As a Drupal practitioner, I want to support in my work so I can grow my skills and sustain the platforms I'm responsible for over the long term. This may be less relevant to people who, say, create the initial sites, but it's certainly relevant for those who have to sustain and keep them up uh, over the years that they're expected to be viable. I was the only Drupal, uh, I was the only person doing Drupal at my job. This is definitely a case that's out there. P Drupal sites that have minimal or sole individual support and they're the themer, backend developer, uh, sometimes designer, the, the be all end all for that Drupal site. They're the sole means of support for that site. And when that person leaves or that site fails, that Drupal niche implodes. I tried it and couldn't get past the beginning parts. I, took uh, an Uber this morning to the, uh, the convention center and the, the gentleman asked me uh, what I was here for and I told him, oh, I'm here for the Drupal convention, DrupalCon. And he said, oh yeah, Drupal, I've used that before. And so I was like, please, tell me your story. I wanna hear it. Uh, and so as he was driving me down St. Charles, he was telling me about how five years ago he was a front-end developer working with Drupal and WordPress and Magento. And during that time, he liked Magento the best but he liked Drupal the least. So I asked him why, and he told me all about the pains of the theme system that of course everybody could probably t share in here. Um, and I asked him what did he go for instead if he couldn't really find success within this universe. And in the end, he had just flat out quit on front-end development, he's an art director now. So more power to him, um, oh, and a part-time Uber driver. Um, <laughs> so more power to him, but it was also disappointing at the time that, you know, to hear his story, like yeah, I tried and I failed. And you know that was the end of that. This one's a little more uh, broad-based. My organization is a Ruby shop, a .NET shop, a Python shop, a Scala shop, a Haskell shop, what have you shop. And Drupal is just this weird thing off to the side. This happens a lot in organizations that have a primary base, but you know, you know there's no good, let's say, Scala CMS, or at least not as powerful as Drupal, so they form a little nucleus of people, and then they're the, the weirdos that work in the other department. Uh, I intentionally phrased this this way to, uh, to be more provocative. My manager didn't support my Drupal habit. <laughs> so, you know, you may be fully well supported and expected to do Drupal in your organization, but maybe you're not a resource to go to Drupal cons, to go to camps, um, to get external exposure to Drupal outside of what you're doing at your desk at work. I was not being mentored or given a path to grow. This may come hand in hand with the previous one. It may be unique to what uh, your situation is, even if you're at a Drupal shop. What is a path of growth in Drupal? Is it, you know, you come in as a front-end developer, you get to be a back-end developer, and then now you're a god developer, whatever, right? And what, what, is, what are paths to growth within the Drupal universe? Back to the original, to earlier point, nobody understands what I do at my work. I'm the only person who does Drupal. I'm the only person who knows what um, hook username alter does. Right, or what the hell a hook is to begin with, and why it takes so long to put a person's real name up uh, as opposed to their email address on their blog post. Drupal is the kids table at my organization. The real engineers sit somewhere else. The people who do Drupal sit under marketing, let's say, and they're the, the, little, the little table that doesn't get the respect afforded the product team, for example. And then the worst of this, Drupal is actively being suppressed at my workplace in favor of another technology. I'm on the Drupal team, but we're the last redoubt. Everything else is eroding away into this other uh, system. Next category, got burned. As a participant of the ecosystem, I want a fair chance to succeed with Drupal 
to contribute, and to be part of the community. I don't think that's an unreasonable ask for anybody who participates with Drupal. I tried to contribute, but I couldn't even get started for whatever reason. Structural difficulties, I just never got mentored, or you know, I just couldn't read this giant doc that didn't make any sense. I'm taking my skills to GitHub. I'm gonna participate in an ecosystem that has very, very low friction, low barriers to entry, uh, low, low uh, barriers to contribution, uh, and I'm just gonna participate there. It may be smaller, less political, what have you. Does everybody know what this reference is? I, I kind of thought that this might fall flat. Uh, no, I, hey, 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 I made American jokes at European DrupalCon that like you could hear crickets laughing, or cr uh, crickets chirping, so I'm just gonna make sure. This is LeBron James, he took his skills to Miami. Okay, okay, just making sure. Oh, see, exactly, see, now you're explaining it. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay, LeBron James, uh, when he was first uh, uh, approaching free agency, instead of directly telling the world where he was going, did a one-hour special on ESPN, where at the very, very end, at the 59th minute, he announced, I'm taking my, my talents to Miami. So 59 minutes of, of banter, and then, you know, he could have just said, yeah, yeah, it, it was crazy, and it he took a huge hit uh, popularity-wise because of this. Anyway, this other community fits me better. This could mean any number of things. This community has more people like me. This people might value my skills better. This community, et cetera. This community fits better for me. I put myself out there and was ignored or worse. This is getting a little you know, into the contributor specific. Uh, the other use cases or stories that I've said so far are very broad based. This is more, you know, I'm getting into the nuts and bolts of Drupal now. And then, and this is maybe even rarer story, but more visible. I pushed as hard as I could and it didn't make a difference. And then, um, I, devoted myself to, I devoted myself to it to an unhealthy degree and I had to step away because it, it was the only way for me to dial it down. And then from a different perspective, but along the same lines, we spent three years in a big pile of cash on Drupal and it was a disaster. We couldn't get off it fast enough. Failure is not only at the individual level, but the organizational as well, and that could leave burned feelings throughout an organization across multiple individuals. And then this one, maybe not so relevant in this room, but certainly in the ecosystem at large. All my Drupal expertise and knowledge lived with my vendor, who was bad, and made Drupal, quote, seem bad, and we couldn't live without the site, so we just had to live with it. This is definitely a, a scenario that exists in the wild, for sure. Two Drupal sites, never again. That was a very, uh, a very terse reply I got. Um, but yeah, they, that's all they, you know, they, they, they wanted to say. Next category, not a fit. As a unique individual, I want outlets for expression and engagement that align with my interests, goals, and beliefs. I did the same thing over and over and over. Every site's the same in the end. The monotony of CMS publishing, uh, especially when you're doing, say, marketing sites, brochureware sites, Huge chunk of our market. I work on problems now that don't have Drupal-shaped solutions. It's easy to imagine that everything is solvable on the web via Drupal as a tool, but there are a lot of things that Drupal is you know, absolutely poor at and or not the right tool. And when you might, once you start entering those problem spaces, you're not, using, uh, you're not reaching for Drupal out of the toolbox. Content management is boring slash dying slash easy. I know this is, uh, I, I put this with a lot of caveats, this is a very jaded position to take and maybe one of those things where it, it, not necessarily fair to CMS as a problem, but certainly attitude that's shared out there. More, I think generously put, I wanted to solve different kinds of problems. That's entirely true when you move away from the CMS space or you're done you know, trying to figure out how to build views and, or the, the, the standard things you do with Drupal. This one came up at DrupalCon, actually. I spoke to an individual. If you had a choice between, quote, making websites or building products, why would you ever choose the former? Right, if you had a, if you had a choice and the skill and the wherewithal and the options to select the latter, why would you ever go for the former? The th thing I'm best at is a side concern in Drupal at best. And this, I have to speak for some of the non-developer roles here. If you're a UX de de uh, designer, if you're a UX researcher, if you are a particularly proficient JavaScript developer, if you're doing X, Y, and Z, 
you know, it's not Drupal's main focus and maybe there isn't a, a, a great use for you or you're not being used to your full potential within Drupal. I found myself spending most of my time in Drupal doing things other than that which I truly love. Drupal pays the bills, Drupal gets things done, maybe not the thing you love the most. The Drupal universe doesn't truly value what it is I do best. It may pay lip service to what you need, might say you need it badly, but in the end you aren't treated as if it were that important and that all comes out. I'm a blank first. It just so happened I used Drupal to solve some problems for a time. Fill in the blank with what you need. Um, the, this, is a, this is true across a variety of roles, not just a single one. And this isn't the Drupal technology or community that I fell in love with originally. Your, I think your point of entry to Drupal is significant in how you contextualize everything that happens since. And if you are, uh, I, I hate to say an old timer like me, but God, um, you know, if you're an old timer like me or you remember the olden days of when Drupal was demographically different, structurally different, um, when Drupal cons, you know, this would be a big session at Drupal con as opposed to the smallest room. Um, you know, maybe your perspective has changed about, you know, what it's like to be in 271 and present to 400. Greener grass. Don't worry, I'm, uh, it, it, there's happier stuff. I'm, I'm getting to it, okay. As a maker with ambitions and desires to grow, I want a platform that can challenge me and meet my interests. I'm done doing billable client work. I heard this one a lot. This one is definitely a, a pain point for many. Um, and it's not specific to Drupal as a technology, but it is endemic to the ecosystem that currently powers in. I didn't want the tech world to pass me by. This idea that while Drupal doesn't change, everything else is, and you somehow miss the, the stop for the express train, and you're, you're just still chugging along. All the innovation in blank is happening elsewhere, in UI, in front end, in database, what have you. All the innovative stuff is happening somewhere else, and I want a piece of that. Drupal opened many doors for me, but I left to do this other thing I've wanted to do since forever. Drupal is a great entree into a technology job. Drupal could be a great first job as a developer, but if your heart's set all along on being, say, um, machine learning, you're not going to find a lot of it in Drupal. You know, I mean, not machine. I just made that one up. I, I didn't actually have a machine learning person tell me this. Drupal is so far behind, so slow moving. That's why I stopped using it. Drupal changed so much and so suddenly, <laughs> and that's why I stopped using it. Honestly, Drupal software kind of sucks. And I'm not saying I agree with this statement, but I heard it. So, I want to pivot a little bit. I want to leave, but I can't, not yet. I heard just as many of those as I did from I've already left and here's why. In fact, I probably heard more of this. And the, the things before are reasons that people would want to leave, but haven't you know, quite cut their ties off. So why don't you leave? What, what do you stay for? I know what it says on the site, but what, what do people stay for? A steady job? There's a lot of steady jobs out there in Drupal. Do you stay for the well-known tech? The, 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 the comfort of knowing something inside and out, or at least your layer of it that you know well? Friends and colleagues. I think this is what a lot of people uh, imagine when they say stay for the community. They, I don't think they stay, you know, when they say community, I don't think people mean stay for the well-documented wikis on Drupal.org. Um, <laughs> You know, friends and colleagues. And how many people are we talking about, really? You know, it, I think it, it's very, very visible and very popular to talk about highly visible veteran contributor who faced out or wound down or left. But it doesn't really capture the amount of people who aren't as visible to the community that have second thoughts or, you know, contemplating a change or have already made a change and completely silently. You didn't even know they were part of the community and now they're gone, right? You know, it's the 80% the of the of the, the iceberg that isn't the, the, the part above water. So I've talked for 20 minutes now, and I'm historically very bad at writing endings to my talks. In fact, I'm awful at it. So I never even call them endings, I just call them codas, because it's just a part at the end. This is an actual quote um, from a friend of mine, and I don't think he'd actually mind if I called him out on this. I hate the software, but God damn it, I love the people. He told me to this, well, he said this at a, a, a Drupal event. Um, 
last fall. I guess it kind of gives away what event that would be, uh, given it's on my shirt. Um, <laughs> but he said this, um, and this is not an uncommon thing to hear. I miss being at blah. Oh, you should say DrupalCon, because it's fair enough. Yeah, there are people who aren't here anymore, but still miss the experience of what we have right now at DrupalCon. I do miss being around my friends. Um, I'll attribute this to the person. If, so if the person in the room wants to own up to this, uh, quitting Drupal isn't an option for me. I can't do it. So it might make sense. It, it might make all the sense in the world to quit, but they can't. Uh, for people who have left, we struggle with the same tech problems in blah that I saw in Drupal. I thought the, the grass would be greener. Um, it's just a different shade of green. Um, just, it, it, just as many weeds in, in that grass as, uh, as it was in Drupal. Ironically, there's also this. I'm still around. I'm just not as visible anymore, nor do I want to be. Does this count as leaving the community? If you're you know, still doing Drupal under the radar, you're just not you know, a speaker anymore, or you're not you know, uh, in the issue queues anymore, you're just doing your thing. You know. Uh, and uh, Jacine Luisi wanted to add, I haven't left. <laughs> yeah, she's still around. Um, and I actually have a, a, a I was going to put a picture of the Slack where she says, you can go ahead and tell them I'm not dead <laughs> and I'm still around. Um, it's not my life anymore, but it's okay. And I think that, that, that captures something about Drupal being your life. Um, so what does this all mean? So originally when I wrote this, there was a, a, a proposed talk by Greg Dunlap called Stay for the Community, which I had really hoped would be one of the keynotes given. But uh, uh, it, it came to pass that it wasn't. And if you haven't read that blog post, it's on Medium. It's called Stay for the Community. It's by Greg Dunlap, Hey Rocker. You really ought, you owe it to yourself to read it. And what I was hoping is I would just like put a bookend to that and you know, uh, sort of take some of the points he brings and, and drive them to their logical conclusion. So uh, apologies if you know, this seems like you're watching episode two of a three-part series, because you kind of are, um, where Greg's is at least the prologue, if anything. Um, so what does stay for the community really mean? And if it's our, if it's our expressed value that we put on every page of Drupal.org, what does that actually mean? And what's Drupal's place in your career actually, what's its value as a, place, as a career entity? God, that's a terrible word for that. Um, as, as you, you know, what, what, what is Drupal's role in your career? What is Drupal's role in your life? Um, I think a lot of the, the, the leaving Drupal has a lot to do with Drupal's role in your life, which is a surprising amount of relevance for something that, you know, it's just code in a browser. Um, and because I did promise I have a terrible, terrible ending, um, has, who of you uh, have read the Watchmen series, or the Watchmen series by Alan Moore? Okay, did anybody see the movie? They, this wasn't in the movie. Um, so at the end of everything after literally, you know, lots of people die and the, the big bad is defeated and everything, all the problems are same. I apologize for the nudity in the next panel. Um, the, the main guy asks uh, another guy. So uh, it all worked out, right? And I did the right thing in the end, right? It all worked out in the end. And then uh, the blue guy, John, uh, who's uh, become godlike in his inscrutability and knowledge of the universe, says, in the end, nothing ends, Adrian. Nothing ever ends. And so Adrian, who's only a mortal human, asks, John, what do you mean by that? And then he's gone. So like that, <laughs> I open the floor for discussion. If, you, if any of these stories resonated with you, if they felt like something you've experienced in the past, something you've seen, something you felt yourself, um, I'd love to hear about it. So a couple of things I'll try to keep them brief so that other people can talk as well. Um, fun statistic, how many people have been a major player in more than two uh, Drupal versions? More than two Drupal major versions? How many do you think? And core itself, two? <laughs> two people? If you exclude Drees, it's two. Mm -hmm. Steven Wittens and Chex. Mm -hmm. I don't know anyone else who has survived more than two core releases. 
and I just finished my number two, so. <laughs> um, on the what does state for the community mean, um, both uh, Emma Jane and Greg Dunlap have observed in different ways that <clears throat> we're here for something, and that something isn't to be a social club, but we lose sight of that something at times. Mm -hmm. I think they've said it much more eloquently than I have. Um, but yeah, it, why are we staying for the community? And is it just a social club? And if so, why? What is that other thing that keeps us here beyond hanging out with friends? For me, um, yeah, I, I can relate to an awful lot of this. I, as I said, we just finished uh, my second core uh, release, and I am fried beyond belief. Many people probably noticed I was fairly inactive for the last year and a half of the Drupal 8 cycle. Uh, basically, after Amsterdam, I had no mental or emotional energy left for core, um, but stuck around enough to make sure that whiskey landed safely. Um, I also just uh, left a company of 10 years. It's a very good company. Uh, for those who haven't read my blog, I just left Palantir.net after 10 and a half years uh, to take a job with Platform SH. And one of the key reasons for that was it is a transitional type of role for me because I was tired of client work. Yeah, they, all the universities look the same to me at this point. I can't tell the difference anymore. But I don't want to leave Drupal because it is a, a good community. I, it is moving in the right direction. I firmly believe that. I have invested a decade of my life in it. But I'm in a role now where I can professionally straddle that line between Drupal and other stuff. And I'll be honest, five years down the line, I don't know where that straddling is going to end up. I may move closer to Drupal. I may move further away. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But a large part of that move for me was you know, what I'm doing now is not sustainable, but I'm so professionally tied up into it, what's my other option? And I'll be honest, this is a really good option. That's why I took it. Um, where that'll lead, I honestly don't know. So there's my story contribution. Thank you. You know, I actually, you, instead of speaking to me, which is kind of weird, it'd be cool if you guys like turn the mic around. And oh, sure. I, I love uh, talking about Drupal. <laughs> Hi. Uh, my name is uh, Chris Weber. I'm a software engineer at The Nerdery. I'm a Drupal enthusiast. And um, uh, last year was my 10-year Drupalversary. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is not an AA club, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Drupal has always been an escape for me. Um, before working where I currently work, I was at that place where nobody knew what Drupal was. Uh, my job was completely different. I was a database engineer. Um, I didn't really have anything in my work or in my future that would allow me to work on product to see that, that, that evolution between a platform that can make app, you can make applications on top of that and the, the ecosystem that is created with that loop. So I have improved my professional skills more with Drupal than anything else I have ever done. And I remember in the time that I was looking for this kind of a project, I searched all different kinds of projects, and every single one of them turned out to be jerks. Seriously, I was having fun until someone said, read the manual, noob. Um, and Drupal was the very first one where someone actually appreciated the input that I put in. And um, the, the Drupal Camp Twin Cities was the very first camp I went to. And, uh, the first person I met was Angie Byron, who immediately said, thank you for your contribution. Let's have lunch with Larry. And I'm like, uh, you know, I've, I've been a lurker. I've been a person who, for, for most of those years, just been lurking and just been watching people do things and saying, hey, that's pretty cool. Wouldn't it be great if I could do something like that? And then over the last couple of years, I've tried to step up. And I don't know if I'm going to reach burnout or anything like that, but I just know that in the conversations that we have with people, the going to the events, the constantly learning of ideas, the constantly being able to share ideas. I can continue to get better as a more confident person, someone who could stand up in front of all of you and consume this time. I'm sorry. 
Um, but the, the fact that I can finally feel like I'm a person that I always wanted to be, someone who has something to share, and Drupal gives me that outlet. Hi, I'm Tim Erickson. I'm also from the Twin Cities community, and Chris Weber was one of the people who welcomed me into that community when I got here. Um, what inspired me to stand up is that when we talk about people leaving Drupal, um, we also have to talk about why people get into Drupal. And one of the things that has occurred to me over time, is, well, one of the things that inspires me about Drupal is the backgrounds of people who come to it when I'm in the community. In the diversity, we sit down in a Drupal user group and we've got people who are dancers and English majors and um, political science majors. I studied peace studies in, in, in college. I uh, was not a coder. And I think a lot of people come into the Drupal community or, or learn about Drupal from non-technical backgrounds but have some technical skills and they want to build their own website. Uh, Drupal is a great tool to do that. Pretty soon they, they enjoy it. Pretty soon somebody else asks them to do it and all of a sudden they have a career in Drupal. And I think it's important to keep that in mind as we think about why people dro leave Drupal because, you know, to some extent to me, that often indicates that this might be a, just a step on a path that's, you know, going somewhere. And, you know, I, um, it, 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 this is different from, I think, people that come from real strong technical backgrounds and maybe have sought out Drupal as a particular technical solution to a problem. I think a lot of us stumble into it. And the fact that we've stumbled into it doesn't shouldn't lock, it, lock us into it for life, right? There's lots of other op opportunities out there. And I don't like to think about the fact that somebody, you know, that spent a lot of time here and invested in it and then moved on, that that's necessarily always a bad thing. Sometimes that's just the right thing for them. And um, I don't know. I think that was just the point I wanted to make. Hello. Uh, my name's Avi. I been doing Drupal for eight years. I've never really been a technical contributor, but uh, been around the community for a while, and I've seen lots of people and met lots of people over the years. Um, and so one of the things that I've seen, I mean, we've obviously been in a, in a rough economic time over the last uh, few years, but I'm also wondering if we, if, if there's, if the people who have been doing, doing the technical, you know, core, module work for uh, for so long and keeping that up if 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 you all see that this um, th this level of burnout is like specifically related to the, the many 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 years of stressing about tr getting Drupal 8 out um, if it's a, a more kind of wide-ranging issue um, and what what you see as as kind of the future do you like the, the last two years have been a lot of people talking about being really, really upset. Um, and, uh, you know, I is that getting better? Um, do we think anything's changing? How do we kind of move forward from all this? That's kind of a question and then a statement also. I just give the talk. I'm not the answer person. <laughs> <laughs> if I had answers, yeah, I wouldn't be giving a talk. Hey, Danny, please. Um, I'm Danny. Um, so I guess my story and how I got into Drupal is a little different. Um, I grew up poor and most of my family still lives in poverty. And the reason I got into Drupal was because it was the first thing I could do where I was actually valued for what I could do and I made money for it. And because of that, it became very important for me to get other people into Drupal and to, as a way to help them essentially help themselves. I've um, been very active in trying to get more women into the tech community, more poor people in the com tech community. A couple of people have probably heard me rant that more dev shops really need to do something about this and you know sponsor essentially underprivileged people and teach them how to do Drupal because I've seen the power that it has. Um, what's interesting to me is that I am much more of a designer who happens to know the web. And I love solving big, nasty, sticky problems. So you can imagine how much that makes me love Drupal. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I also, by the way, want to argue that a website is a product, and without websites, most products would not exist because you could not sell them or support them. So that's 
my rant. Um, but I think it's interesting because I am much more of a designer because as I've grown, I've transitioned out of actually writing code and more into leadership and UX and all of these other things. Um, the fact that I still keep coming back to Drupal. But speaking to the you know burnout, when I was doing my master's thesis, I spent 15 months going to a ton of Drupal events, talking to people, giving, you know, giving presentations, and it was fantastic, but I also had a one-year-old, and I was getting a master's degree. I am not quite as active now, and I'm learning to be okay with that, because I can come in and bring value when I can in the ways that are good for me, and that's been a really tr important transition, because I feel like what I heard from contributors is that it becomes all-encompassing, and so much gets dumped on you, especially when you become very active in the community. So I guess what I'm saying is, A, Drupal is still really, really important, especially if we think of it as a tool to enact social change and to help bridge the gap that we have, unfortunately, in terms of income inequality, but also that as contributors, we really need to make it easier for other people to take the burden so we aren't constantly burning ourselves out. Hey, Ryan, Ryan, you, you can step up. Like, so it's, you guys aren't so close Sorry, to the door. Sorry, I mean the line at the back. It's Greg's, it's Greg's fault, it's all Greg's fault. My bad, yeah. um, I guess I'll just get out of here. <laughs> um, Sure. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I guess that I have a couple different thoughts. You know, um, echoing what Danny said, I think it's really important that everybody takes care of themselves, avoids burnout, take care of each other, right? Um, Rand Randy Fay, who is uh, not here, um, interestingly enough, I don't know if you pinged him perhaps, but no. um, I feel like he might have some interesting thoughts about like leaving the Drupal community, although he still does some stuff. But he had a really good series of blog posts about burnout, what causes it, like how to recognize it in yourself and others, how to take care of yourself. Um, also, I looked at, uh, you know, sort of to Larry's point and Ari? Avi. Avi, pardon me. Um, uh, I looked at, uh, because this is what I love to do in my free time, looked at CVS commit messages um, going back to like the beginning of time for different releases of Drupal um, and found like that there's sort of a, pre a somewhat predictable arc that people have followed of like having one or two commits, having 30% of the commits in a release, having 20% of the commits in release, having 5%, right? Like, it's, it's a pattern that has been happening since 2001, and I think is um, something that happens probably in almost all projects. Um, I'll also say that, like, for myself personally, uh, I have a six-year-old who I love very much, and, uh, you know, she's become a, um, you know, and, and a three-year-old. Um, and they, uh, you know, when they were born, I, like, consciously said, okay, what are the things that I'm gonna cut out of my Drupal community involvement? Um, and tried to find uh, able replacements for those things that I did as much as I could. Um, and, uh, and in fact, like sometimes those replacements are now finding replacements. Um, so, you know, I think that that's sort of like uh, an important thing for people to consider as you're considering your own commitments and burnout is how can I transition this effectively so that um, things can be, you know, carried on. I'm, I'm going to bring one point up here, and I, I don't want to overly f emphasize the role of contributors in this. I, I know it's very important contributors, and without contributors, we wouldn't have Drupal, and then you know we'd all have to work on WordPress. Uh, but w I, I tried to be as um, not ambiguous. I want to be as broad based as possible when we talk about people burning out, because it's not always just contributors that burn out. Right? People who attempt to contribute, people who don't even know how to contribute themselves, burn out as well. Um, there's a movie, Apocalypse Now, which is, I think, like four hours long. And, you know, and, and it took them like a year to make this movie. It, it was such an ordeal that a second movie was made about the making of that first movie, right? And so there's a second movie you can watch, which is two and a half hours long, about the making of this other four hour long movie. That two and a half hour movie has director's commentary about the making of the making of that movie. <laughs> so I think that there's a certain there's absolutely necessity to talk about uh, contributors to Drupal themselves, um, but we shouldn't also, I mean, we are at DrupalCon. We are at a core conversation in DrupalCon, right? Like we are, we have, uh, this, is, this is the director's commentary to the making of, of the making of the movie, right? Um, th we, we shouldn't lose sight of the larger people who one can't or won't participate in something like DrupalCon and certainly not step into a core conversation about participating at DrupalCon. Um, 
So that, all that to say, there's definitely a dark matter of participants out there that we shouldn't lose sight of or at least, you know, or overlook in our zeal to solve the problems that are very, very present in front of us right now. Hi, my name is Ryan, and uh, I actually have recently done a leaving of my own. I left my home of Orlando, Florida, and I moved to the West Coast in Portland. So when I was there in Orlando, you know, active in the local technology scene, we would watch all these people move to San Francisco, move to New York, move to LA. Where would they go to start a company, to get a job, to work for Google or whatever it was? And so there was always this sort of discussion of like, how do we stop the brain drain? And it wasn't necessarily that our community was bad, it's that some other thing was pulling those people away. Um, but this is discussion that is being had on all different levels. But one of the things I think is really positive here is that this community doesn't have, you know, just like one physical location where it can happen. And I, I kind of think while we're having this discussion, like if the people in this room didn't have Drupal to tie us together, like would we get together 10 years from now for the, you know, DrupalCon class reunion? And I think maybe that's even something that we should look at, you know? And I guess as the person saying it, now it's my responsibility to organize said <laughs> event. You know, if DrupalCon ever stops, who's going to be the president of the DrupalCon Alumni Association, right? Um, maybe there's something there that we can do to make sure that the people who have left us, you know, are, are still feeling welcome even, right? Is leaving necessarily a bad thing, right? I've graduated, I got a job, I got a master's degree, I had seven kids, I don't have time for this anymore. Is it is it bad? Like I feel like, not to not to say anything against you, David, mm -hmm. but I feel like the premise of this talk is that leaving Drupal is a bad thing. No, 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 I didn't say that. No, but I, 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 I don't I, know. I, did anybody come in here with that that preconception? Okay. You guys are way less judgmental than me. That. Correct. <laughs> uh, so, so that's uh, something that I think about too. Is you know, if if we all leave Drupal, what happens too? Right. Uh, I would hate to lose you guys. So. I, I have about seventeen more things I could say, but I'm going to pass it on. Hi, my name is Mark, and I'm a Drupalist. <laughs> um, so I've been doing Drupal for like seven and a half years now, something like that. I think pretty normal path, like the first few years of working with Drupal, it was like head desk syndrome, right? Like, why is this so frustrating? Why can't I figure this out? Banging my head, like, and then finally, you know, trying to figure something out and figuring it out. And then some, somewhere along the line, well, Twin Cities Drupal, one of the Twin Cities Drupal camps, I started figuring out how I could try to start helping to fix the things that were making me bang my head on the desk, which just created a new problem of now I have new things to bang my head against because then I ran into the Drupal contribution process, which, uh, you know, that, that's a real challenge, is it is not always easy to contribute to Drupal. And I know you don't want to... You know, there, there, I, there's definitely other situations no, out no, there. This is my situation. No, tell your story. So, um, you know, and, and I've talked to other people who aren't really participating as much, and, and this is a thing. Like, you post a patch. Maybe it gets reviewed in three months. Maybe there's an issue that stays open. I mean, I don't even know how many issues I've run into. It's, like, been open for seven years. Like, there's definitely things, like, these have stuck around. And they're hard problems, you know, it's understandable. It's nobody to blame. We're all, this isn't like a blaming thing, it's just like, it is difficult. And uh, this might surprise you, but people on the internet have different opinions <laughs> about things. <laughs> so, um, not only are you going to run into some friction of, like, just, it can be difficult, the whole review process can take a really long time, there can be, you know, we got to get every little thing very, very, very perfect, and so there's back and forth and back and forth, and you have to 
re-roll a patch numerous times, but then you run into you know disagreements about should we do this or should we not, and and when you're first getting involved in the community, you might not. This is my first DrupalCon. I've been involved you know seven and a half years. This is my first time, and there's a lot of people. It's different when you know people in person and you've known them face to face. But it's when people don't know each other face to face, it's really easy for things to get contentious and for people to, because it's just like a, you know, I, I like that we have avatars now because at least there's like some indication of the, the human in there, you know? Um, and then, so, you know, so you work through and you get past the contribution process and, and then you, you deal with disagreements and like, but some of them, you know, I love this XKCD comment comic where uh, you know there's somebody like typing at their computer late at night and you know there's something wrong on the internet right like for me that's sometimes one of the drivers of of working with Drupal like I've come to really care about this and I I really like Drupal and I I want to make sure that it's as good as can be my ideas of what is the good thing for Drupal are going to disagree with somebody else's thing and when it gets contentious over time you know, it's it's draining. It's mentally draining, and for a lot of people, I mean, the the work that you do, the work that you put into this, g is done in after hours work. Like you do a full day of coding, and then, like, you know, I've, my daughter's three and a half. So you do dinner, you do uh, bedtime routine, and then, you know, do I have the energy? Is it good for my mental health to spend another couple, you know, an hour, two hours, three hours to dive in in a difficult process and do that? Or is it better for me to like do something that's gonna be a little bit relaxing and be better for my mental health? And you know, it's it feels like how long can you sustain this? Um, one of the things for leaving Drupal, I, I'm not sure if you mentioned this or not, but you know, hopefully it gets to the point where the things that were the itch that you wanted to scratch, the thing that you were frustrated and you want to fix, like, hopefully, like, one of the outcomes is, like, hey, I fixed that thing. And it's like, all right, I fixed that. <laughs> you know, I'm exhausted enough. Maybe then I'm going to take a break. Like, I certainly took a break after 8 came out, and I'm only now starting to, like, getting into writing some stuff again. Uh, actually, but I don't know. I just wanted to talk about the fact that it's, like, maybe, maybe finding ways to smooth our... Um, process of contributing in the issue queues, that might help a little bit with burnout, but I mean, no matter what, it's it's a difficult thing, and, and I agree, like, it's, I don't know, you got to do what's right for you, I think, like, you got to take care of yourself, so I guess that's my message to me. All right, thanks. I, I wanted to say one thing, oh, sorry, I didn't mean, I don't mean to, to prevent you from speaking, the one thing Greg said really resonated with a set of slides I actually deleted. Um, I, I had a, a, a one set that was more cheeky and it had to do with um, pa Padawans, actually, you know, Jedi apprentices. Um, the idea that we're just older than we started in Drupal. All of us have just gotten older, right? We get older, we can't, you know, I can't dunk anymore, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't run a 4340 anymore. But the idea that, you know, 25-year-old me, you know, had no problems doing some of these, you know, all-in you know, all kind of commitments to technology and hobbies that 35-year-old me can't anymore. Um, and there, I saw this talk for, uh, I know, maybe it was JSConf, maybe it was FluentConf, I forgot which conference it was, but somebody on stage said something about how this was the last talk he was ever going to give because he wanted to cede his space for the next person that would secede him. And that while he continued to be that guy who talked about blah, but he was, you know, he, as he, while he continued to be like the JavaScript guy, right, that prevented the next layer of, of, of talent to bubble up and become the next JavaScript guy or what have you, right? I'm, I'm, I'm butchering the story. Um, but the idea that you, you know, one can't be a master without an apprentice or yielding their position to their apprentice at some point does sort of ring true in Drupal. Uh, some of us have been, um, I, I, not me, but some of us have been, uh, I think, that guy for a really, really long time. And when we look around to look, see where, who's the next that guy, um, Maybe we can't have another next that guy until the first that guy, you know, steps off the stage a little. Anyway, go ahead.
Hi, my name's Holling, and I'm at the step two of the 12-step program, from step one being a lurker to step two being one of the seven community organizers for the Drupal meetup at NYC. So uh, I just want you guys to take a step back and say that this is an open source community. We are run by volunteers. Volunteers. I mean, do you, do you guys get paid for this to write this up, this whole piece of software that runs like 5% of all the websites in the world? Probably your company does, but what on, you guys do it on your own time. So I want you to know that do not feel guilty that you have to walk away, take a break, or walk away forever. It is, I know volunteer burnout, my non-tech interest. I've been a Sunday school teacher for seven years. I was the only Sunday school teacher. And last month, I told my priest I have to leave Sunday school. I know what volunteer burnout feels like. So please do not feel like guilty or like, it's okay to feel tired. It is absolutely, honor your feelings, honor your body, honor yourselves. It is okay to be selfish because it is like when we're on a plane with those emergency protocols, they say that if the oxygen mask drops off, you put it on yourself first before helping others. There's no, do not feel guilty that you have to help yourself first because otherwise then somebody else will have to help you. So I want you guys to know that I really, I for myself really appreciate all the work that you've done for Drupal to push it to Drupal 8, to push it to this awesome platform that my other developers, other non-Drupal believers look at this platform and say that, hey, this is something that we can use. Hey, this is something that we can get behind. So thank you all. Thank you. So we have literally seven minutes, so you get three minutes each. Sorry. And I can take six minutes. Okay. okay. Uh, I've been in this room accidentally and I saw Larry and some other speakers, I decided to stay. By the way, uh, I like the PHP 7 that Larry uh, uh, did uh, very much uh, with my limited knowledge. Uh, uh, I have uh, a few words about the technical. Um, let's say um, Larry was very enthusiastic and very happy when he was speaking about PHP 7. I saw different Larry here. Uh, I, I, I would like to see the lady that I saw first. I, I, I would like to see everybody in that mood. But what I see, um, um, my point is about technical is, let's say jQuery is uh, independent of any uh, application. And VisiVeek, CK Editor, you can use them independent of the applications. Uh, what I see with my limited knowledge is um, Drupal 8 became like a mon monster. If we could uh, make it uh, next to uh, Drupal's uh, APIs more independent from each other's, which I believe it would be possible, then I think uh, it makes everybody more happy, especially uh, we, we would be able to keep uh, um, talents like Larry, and we all will be happy. Thank you, that's my point. Hi, my name is Lucas. Uh, I think that um, what our, our, our friend over here uh, spoke about is, is absolutely true. Um, and to, to add on to that is um, we get a high. We, we get excited um, when we, we come up with really great solutions and we're the module guy or you know, we're doing a lot with whiskey or I'm doing a lot with migrate right now because I've got time in my daily life and my family life. And I, I like that. I like that people ask me questions in IRC. I think everyone in here likes to be that guy. But then I think we also need to kind of accept that we can't always do that. And it, so you're asking, is it bad? I did kind of walk in thinking, leaving Drupal, hmm, is that a bad thing? I don't know. I, it's not, but it is. I think we have to identify in ourselves that it's okay not to want that adrenaline rush in our own lives. Um, because someone else will always replace us. Someone will all else will always step up and be the next JavaScript god, right? Yeah. Um, right? Not, not me. No, right. No, no. I'm just looking at you because you, yeah. you shared about it. But, um, you know, we are all replaceable. And, uh, you know, we just got to wait till the person who comes from some, either some very, uh, remote parts of the world or from the U.S. or somewhere to step forward and 
and, and, and be the next uh, god at, at Drupal. And, and then, you know, we can retire. Yeah. You're the last one, Larry. I'm going to only slightly disagree with that. We're not all replaceable. We need to all make ourselves replaceable. There's an important difference. All right. Um, as a small favor, so for those who uh, stuck around, please rate my session. And for those who just came in and didn't hear any of my session, you can rate it too. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you.